and we're back. MikeStarChangerPlay.com. Quick explanation. The Mika, whatever her name is, facelift. Mika's father was the architect of ISIS and the architect of Al-Qaeda. So Mika's not a good person. Her father is a, a bad person. Her father um, created terrorism as we know it due to his foreign policy in Afghanistan. So the idea that these are good people is, of course, a myth. Mika's dad is dead, and he led to a lot of people being murdered and committed terrorism and everything. So I don't really care about her. I don't care about her dad. The whole tweet thing, I'm just going to explain to you why it works. Set aside, because whenever Trump does this, people go, whenever Trump does something like this, people go, oh my God, he's crazy. He's lost it. No, no, no. It worked. It worked. Now everybody who, everybody who ever sees Mika is going to think facelift. And the whole image about bleeding everywhere was so visual and so powerful. It was a headshot. It was a kill shot. No question about it. Now, what I've tweeted it, do I agree with it? Mike Cernovich is going to hold his tongue. Mike Cernovich is going to withhold his judgment of whether or not that tweet was appropriate or not. That isn't, that isn't for me to talk about. But the point is it worked and it isn't crazy. Here's, this is the best way to understand Trump or the best, best way to understand anything, okay? You want to make it easy to be your friend and hard to be your enemy, right? You want people to know, hey, if you're nice to me, I'm going to be very, very nice to you. I'm going to call you good things. If you're going to be mean, then I'm going to be very mean back. So the media has made fun of Trump's hair, his hands. Remember when they accused him of having syphilis? Who, what's up, piece of party, Ben? Who remembers that? I'm old enough to remember when the media claimed Trump had syphilis, right? So they, so they, they say all these terrible things about him. Trump has syphilis. He has bad hair. His wife's a hooker. His wife's an escort. His wife is a pornographer. They, you know, Trump is mentally ill. So barren is autism. You name it. They've gone after his family for everything that, that you could possibly imagine. And so, welcome. Yeah, they said he raped, they said he raped an underage girl. They've done the whole thing, right? If Hillary Clinton said Mike Cernovich is a whatever, do you know what I would say if Hillary Clinton said Mike Cernovich was bleeding everywhere or whatever? I would say, well, you know, I've been kind of hard on that bitch. You know, we got it coming. So if, if, if Hillary Clinton or John Podesta or Bill Clinton or Chelsea Clinton, if they um, if they tweeted out, you know, Mike Cernovich was bleeding everywhere out of his penis, you know, maybe he had some kind of accident. I would be like, well, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You live by the insult, you live by going hard, then people are going to go hard on you. I wouldn't be crying about it. I wouldn't be like, oh, my God. I'm such a victim. I'm being bullied. I would just say, I would just say, okay, I dish it. I dish it out. I can take it. I said Hillary Clinton says Parkinson's. I took over a microphone and called Bill Clinton a rapist. I've called Chelsea Clinton a, ba a basic bitch who stole money from Haitian children to pay for her wedding dress. I've said that Hillary Clinton helps the Saudis traffic children through Haiti, which is true. So how am I going to cry? How am I going to cry if they, they come after me? Even though what I'm saying is true, Bill Clinton is a rapist. Chelsea Clinton is a basic bitch. She did steal money from Haitian children to pay for her wedding. Hillary Clinton did help the Saudis traffic children. This is all actually true. But the point is, if you go hard, people are going to go hard back. GTF over yourselves. Get over it. They've called Trump. He's ugly. He has bad hair, bad breath, mental illness, STDs, insulted his wife, called his wife a hooker, called his child, you know, uh, speculates about the medical condition of his child and everything else. So all these people, are, they savage the guy. They savage him. Yeah, they call him fat. They say he, eat two, he eats two scoops of ice cream. So they, they savage the guy. 
And then they want to cry. Yeah, Cheeto's head. They savage him, and then they cry when he savages them. So my advice to Mika, whose dad created Hezbollah, look into Mika's dad, who is dead. Mika's dad died. People are like, oh, R.I.P. Oh, R.I.P. to this great... No, he was a trash human being. Mika's dad was human garbage, funded terrorism, created terrorism, human garbage, armed Al-Qaeda. Terrible. Mika is not a good person. The idea that she's a victim when her father was a terrorist. Point is this, though. If you're in the media, and I know a lot of media people watch me. I know a lot of mainstream media people watch I got a few friends in the mainstream media, or at least frenemies. I don't know if I have any friends in the main... I have frenemies. We'll call them that. I have people that I would like to not see get hit. We'll put it that way. There are people that I know who work in the mainstream media that I would not like to see them get punched in the face. That if somebody actually hit them, I would say, man, this is terrible. This is a problem, right? So I go hard, but I draw the line of violence. So all you frenemies of mine in the media, or even people in the media who don't like me, but watch me every time. Here's my message to you. Raise the conversation. Raise your voice. Raise the level of discourse. Quit calling Trump Cheeto's head. Quit calling his wife a hooker, saying she's in porn. Quit going after Baron Trump. If you see people going after Baron Trump, say, hey, the kid's 11. Why don't you leave him the fuck alone? Why don't you not fuck with 11-year-old kids? Call out the bullshit when you see it. Because you call out my shit all fucking day. Media Matters downloads everything that I do. They came to my rally. They tried to lie to me. I actually screamed at a kid in the face. Some short, fat little kid was lying, spreading fake news. And I screamed at him and told him to get out of my face. And he freaked out. So if you're in the media, if you're a friend of me or you're an enemy, things are getting bad. And I've been telling you motherfuckers this for months. For over a year ago, I've been telling you fucks. I've said, you guys have no fucking idea what is going on. That if you're in media, you are inciting violence against Trump supporters and against yourself. I've been warning you motherfuckers. I've been telling you. I've been saying, watch your language. Watch the way you treat people. Respect people. Be good to people. Call out the bullshit on your team when you see it. Disavow Antifa. Call out the unfair attacks to Melania. Yasher, to his credit, does. God help me. Yasher is a liberal, liberal as can be, but I was really impressed with him because somebody called Sarah Huckabee Sanders fat. And Yasher goes, hey man, you know, call her out for being the press secretary. Call her out for maybe not being fair to the media. Don't call her fat though. You know, raise the discussion. So if you're in the liberal media, and your people are saying, you know, Sarah Palin's a cunt. Because we all remember that. Uh, the teabaggers, the, you know, Anderson Cooper saying people are getting teabagged. Right? Remember that? Oh, the Tea Party. Oh, they're teabagging each other. Call it, you know, uh, Trump sucks Putin's dick, cock holster. That's the whole point is if you motherfuckers don't want the violence to happen because it's happening, raise your level of discourse. If you don't like Trump saying Mika had a facelift, quit calling him Cheeto's hand. Quit calling his wife a whore. Quit calling his son a whore. Go after your team. Call out what your team does and say, hey, man, let's not do this. And it isn't that hard. Again, all credit to Yasher. Total liberal guy. You know, our politics, I'm sure we don't agree on anything. But there's a liberal who is saying, hey, that isn't cool. It isn't cool to call Sarah Huckabee Sanders like a fat bitch, you know? There's nothing cool about that. How about you just criticize her for her role and her job, right? If everybody in the media did that, things would dial down real fast. Things would go down real fast. So let's not call Sarah Palin a cunt. Remember when CNN laughed when her daughter got into a fight? Do you guys remember that? Remember when a CNN anchor goes, huh? <laughs> this is the funniest video you're going to see. <laughs> the Palin kids. <laughs> so funny. So CNN, uh, so those of you, can, you can find it actually. And she was never fired. They, there was a clip where there was a domestic dispute amongst uh, Sarah Palin's daughter. And it was a very sad situation. 
and the CNN anchor goes, ha, 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 ha. Well, this is the funniest clip you're going to see on the Internet all week. <laughs> and no, there's nothing funny about domestic violence. There's nothing funny. They called Sarah Palin's uh, son a mentally, you know, a mentally handicapped child. Andrew Sullivan had claimed that the son was illegitimate or something. I mean, look at how they treated the Palins. Remember all those T-shirts you could buy Sarah Palin as a cunt? I remember this. See, that's the whole thing is a lot of people like me aren't distracted by the latest little glitz. I remember how Sarah Palin was cheat, uh, uh, treated. I remember what... No, I'm not driving, guys. I remember... I'm in the, I'm in the parking lot going to go to the gym. I remember... The, where, the way Sarah Palin was treated. I remember people laughing at CNN about her daughter being a, a victim of domestic violence. I remember Anderson Cooper talking about the Tea Party being teabagged, you know, which is a sexual term. But then they go, gasp. Gasp. I can't believe it. They're going out. I remember all this stuff, guys. I remember all of it. So here's the deal. If you want to ratchet down the rhetoric... Because I will tell you, this is 100%, 100% true. Violent, there will be violence against the media. I don't want it. I'm predicting. I'm predicting, but I don't want it. There will be violence against the media, and a person who does that, nobody's going to care. I'm just going to tell you right now. Outside, if, if somebody right now did a violent thing against somebody in the media, the public would not care. They just wouldn't care. And that's where you are. So the way you have to, because I manage my things. That's why, again, not to belabor the point, because I get tired of talking about it. But why did I take a stand against the Nazi salute? It isn't because I was triggered by the Nazi salute. But it's because I understand humanity in real life. If you throw a Nazi salute, you are inviting violence. Okay? That isn't right. It doesn't make it right. I don't think people who throw a Nazi salute should be able to be to commit violence. I don't think I think it's wrong. But if you throw a Nazi salute, you're saying, "Hey, hit me." If you're throwing a Nazi salute, you're saying, "Come after me with the baseball bat." You are saying, "I want to start a fight and I want violence." That's what you're saying. So for me, just for my own, you know, intelligence, I said, "Okay, I'm going to draw the line with the Nazi salute because that's what you're, you're asking for it." Asking for it does not mean you deserve it. The media does not deserve violence. The media doesn't deserve violence. However, what they're saying and the way they're acting is inviting it. So just like throwing a Nazi salute doesn't mean you deserve to be beaten up. The opposite. Nobody deserves to be violent for, for speech acts. Just because you do it doesn't mean you deserve it, but you have to understand humanity. And the reality is that when you do certain things and behave a certain way, you are inviting violence. So if you're inviting violence and you don't want it, slow your roll. So if you're in the media right now, if you're a friend of me and mine in the media, if you're an enemy of mine in the media, if you're a secret admirer of me in the media, if you're a friend of mine in the media, here's my advice to you. Treat conservative women the way you say that I should treat liberal women. Baby steps. Here's a baby step. Did you notice that when that Playboy reporter interrupted Sarah Huckabee, nobody said he was mansplaining? Think about that for a minute. Think about that. At every feminist website in the world, if that had been a woman working for Obama and a Daily Caller man, if Scott Greer... If Scott Greer had argued with any woman who is a Democrat like that, they would say, oh, my God, should we pull the credentials of the Daily Caller? That was so disruptive. That was disrespectful. This is mansplaining. Women, even if you're a press secretary, you can't. We know what the narrative would have been. It would have been nonstop. Oh, my God, this is terrible. Women are not treated with respect. I can't believe this. This is the, the, the awful, awful, awful thing. But when a man talks over a conservative woman, he's a hero. Well, this guy finally said what needed to be said. Oh my God, that was so cool what he did. What a hero. I'm glad we put that bitch in her place. Right? I'm glad we put that bitch in her place. 
So if you're in the media, I'll give you one simple tip that will change your credibility overnight. This do, Use this one easy tip to improve your credibility overnight. Hold your liberal colleagues to the same standard when you deal with women as you hold conservative people. So treat conservative women. I'm not even, don't be nice to me. Here's me. I woke up screaming, fuck the world. I don't care, right? Fuck you. I don't care how you treat me. I like that you mistreat me because it creates a narrative around me that's helpful. So I'm glad that they, I'm glad that they mistreat me because that, for me, plays into my hands. I need enemies. For me to exist, I have to have an enemy. I'm in the Hegelian dialectic. So the only way for me to have relevance is for me to have enemies. So if I don't have people being mean and nasty to me every day, then I kind of like disappear because I'm a natural warrior. If you've ever read uh, Warrior, Magician, King, Lover, it's a book on kind of Jungian archetypes. So I am a war. I have a warrior energy. So if I don't have a fight, then I don't have. I'm a Scorpio as well. So if I don't have a fight, there's nothing for me to do. If I wake up, that's why when people are like Sarvich, you've been quiet. Because nobody started a fight with me. What am I going to do? So I need for my warrior energy to come out. I need to be attacked. I need people to treat me nasty. And I like when people treat me nasty and, and abuse me and attack me because that arouses in me my energy, my natural warrior energy. So don't be nice to me. But if you're in the media, start treating conservative women the way that you demand we treat liberal women. If you do that, within a week, your credibility will double. So if you do an article, you should say, well, is it right for that guy to speak over a woman press secretary? Maybe that guy was mansplaining to her. Maybe he's not respecting a woman. Would he have, would he have uh, spoken over a man that way? So that is my one easy tip that the media can apply to regain credibility. Treat conservative women... The way you demand we treat liberal women. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to become a, you know, I'm not going to become a nice guy. So, you know, this isn't a negotiation with me. I'm still going to be doing what I do, right? So, you're not negotiating with Mike Cernovich. Mike Cernovich is going to, you know, keep being whatever I am. But if you want credibility amongst the normal people, the people who hate you, then treat conservative women... Conservatives treat liberal women. If you do that, your credibility is going to skyrocket overnight. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to go to the gym. Mike Cernovich, DangerInPlay.com. Hitting the gym. I'm going to do some buys, tries, shoulders, and some Wim Hof breathing. For those of you curious, I'll do... Do some Wim Hof breathing. Do some Wim Hof breathing. Some shoulders, some buys and tries. Get a good workout in. I'll be back later on today.